Oh, I have these marks on the screen. They'll come in handy in a minute. Next example, a little more conversion work here. Gasoline sells for 11 pesos per liter in Mexico. What is the price in units of U.S. dollars per gallon? And before you say to yourself, I'll never use this. I got to tell you, I've never been down to Mexico. Wouldn't mind going one day, <clears throat> but I do go to Canada a lot. And the price in Canada <clears throat> is in liters. And um, the Canadian dollar is different than the American dollar. So this is something that I've personally used on my travels. And I usually go to Canada bef before COVID, probably two, three times a year. So uh, for me, this is something that I would do frequently. And you might find yourself similarly doing things. Okay, so first, there are $0.09136 dollars per peso. So let's see how many dollars per liter it is. Um, there are 11 pesos. Um, and it's 0 0.09136 dollars per peso. I line the pesos up so that I can kill one top and bottom. That leaves me with dollars. So the bottom line is that it's a dollar five, a dollar 1.005, which is a half of a cent per liter. Okay. But now <clears throat> we got to factor in how many liters there are per gallon because we want dollars per gallon. So to do that, I got to take the dollar point zero zero five. That's kind of like when they put them up in the uh, the gas station. They do one point zero zero nine, all right. Times I have to multiply by the three point seven eight five liters it takes to make a gallon. So um, liters in the top, right? So that when they go die die, I get the price in dollars per gallon. And when I do that, the liters cancel out, and I get three dollars and eighty cents per gallon. That was a pretty complicated one. Um, if you need to go back over that again, don't be afraid to. There's two steps. First, I get the price per liter. Then I convert liters to gallon to get the price per gallon. Okay, so <clears throat> summary of working with units. Identify the units involved in the problem. Use the units to help you to decide how to approach the problem, particularly in one of two ways. Either you're going to use small to big when you need to know the conversion factor. And remember, um, if you go big to small, you multiply, small to big, you divide. Or <clears throat> um, where you need to put the factors so that they cancel each other out, whichever approach you go with, okay? Um, you need to be careful of cubes and squares, right? If you're going to use the factor more than once, like if you're going to cube it, use it three times, square it twice, <clears throat> then you've got to use the factor the same number of times. When you complete your calculations, make sure the answer is in the units that you expected. If it doesn't, double check and see if you went wrong somewhere. Okay, so that's our summary of working with units so far. Um, a couple more problems to do and then we're done here. Uh, I want to talk to you about the underlying strategy and how important that could be. And this also applies to praxis and any math work that you're going to do. Okay, you're buying 50 acres of farmland at a cost of $12,500 per acre. What's the total cost? So <clears throat> what I always advise my students to do, because word problems tend to be the most difficult for students, is to underline the important stuff and make sure you use it. You're buying 50 acres, it's 12,500 per acre. Make sure you use that 50, and make sure you use the 12,500. It's a best practice with word problems to give a quick read once, which we did, underline the important pieces, which we did, and then try to solve it. Don't try to solve it right away. In wrestling, um, there's a point in the match where the referee starts a period, and usually one guy's on the bottom, one guy's on the top. And the guy on top can get himself in trouble if he tries to pin him before he flattens him out. So until you get that the wrestler flattened out where he's prone, then you can start to try to pin him. And likewise with a word problem, some people try to solve it before they've really read it through and identified the important stuff and underlined it. And by underlining and making sure that you're remembering to use all of that stuff, I think it focuses you on the most important parts of the word problem. Only after doing that, try to solve. Here's two approaches for this problem. Strategy one, simplify to something with which you are familiar. This works with a lot of word problems. I'm personally very familiar with this one because I love chocolate chip cookies. If you bought 50 cookies and they were two bucks a piece, how much would the cookies cost? 100 bucks. So you have to multiply. So now go back, take the numbers and multiply. 50 acres times $12,500 per acre, notice the acres do go die-die, is $625,000. Strategy true, 
approach it like a units problem. In other words, make sure you get those acres, one in the numerator and one in the denominator, so that they cancel each other out, and you're only left with the dollars, which is what you wanted. See, it says, what's the total cost? Right, it wants the cost, so your answer should be left with dollars only. There's my acres to cancel out, and I'm left with dollars only, $625,000. So strategy one, simplify to something with which you're familiar. Strategy two, approach it like a units problem. Set up the cancel. Okay, next up. A human, a human ear beats, hmm. A human heart beats about 70 times per minute. If an average human being lives to 75 years of age, how many times does the average heart beat in a lifetime? So this is one of those chain cancellation guys here. Let's underline the important stuff, right? Read it through once, underline the important stuff. 70 beats per minute, 70 times per minute. 75 years old, how many times does the average heart beat in a lifetime? It's actually a little bit more because I think you live to be the average age now. It actually went down a little bit, but I think it's around 77 or 78 years old. Okay, so... Let's see, um, we could do it strategy one, simplify the problem. If a heart beats two times per minute and you live to be 75 years old, well, you gotta do how many minutes and then you gotta do how many minutes in a day, then you gotta do how many days in a year, then you gotta do how many years in 70 times 75. We could do that, okay? It wants to know how many times is it going to beat? But let's go with the second strategy where we cancel out until we're left with only beats. So I start with 70 beats per minute Right here it is, 70 beats per minute. The next one's going to be minutes per hour. That clues me off to what goes next. Hours per day. That clues me off to what goes next. Days per year. And then, of course, 75 years. And when I cancel all of those like things out, I cancel out the minutes. I cancel out the hours. I cancel out the days. And I cancel out the years. The only thing I'm left with is beats, which is what I want. And then I've got to multiply those numbers straight out. 70 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 75 is all about 2,759,400 beats. That's a lot of heartbeats, boy. <laughs> and that's just to, like at the resting. Imagine when you're out there like competing and running around and getting exercise. Man, how many times does your beat heartbeat in your lifetime? That's a lot of beats. All right. Treat the units like the variables, okay? Another practice problem. We've got one more to go after this, then we're done. Suppose you drive a car, okay? Average gas mileage of 28 miles per gallon. You're going to make a 2,500 mile cross country trip. How many gallons of gas should you expect to use? Round to the nearest tenth. Stop and start. Okay, so underlining the important stuff, 28 miles per gallon, 2,500 mile cross country trip. How many gallons of gas should you expect to use? You can see we have a die die coming up, huh? <laughs> Round it to the nearest tenth. This time, let's simplify the problem using the first strategy. If you drove 100 miles in the car and got 20 miles per gallon, how many gallons would you need? Well, got to divide the 100 miles into blocks of 20. 100 divided by 20 is 5. So we have to divide. So 2,500 divided by 28 is 89.28, which means you're going to need about 89.3 gallons, which means that nowadays with the price of gas, you're probably going to have to take out a second mortgage. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. What if you chose the second strategy? Well, you have 2,500 miles divided by 28 miles per gallon. Okay. But remember, when you divide, you flip and multiply. So that would be one gallon in 28 miles. So killing the miles terms, canceling them out, 2,500 divided by 28, we already said was 89.3. Okay, one more problem. Time for you to do stop and start. Go ahead. All right, so we always like you to underline the important stuff. 75 feet long, 54 feet wide, 6 inches below. Danger, danger, danger. Feet. Feet, inches. I am not bowling for that. I know I have to convert those inches to a similar unit here at the end of the day. So I convert my 6 inches to a half a foot. Okay. Volume, length times width times height. 75 feet by 54 feet by a half a foot. 
I multiply those numbers and I get 2,025 feet cubed or cubic feet. How much water would it take in cubic feet? I'm done. How much water would it take in cubic feet? The only thing I really needed to do there was make sure that I converted the six inches to a half a foot. Treat units like variables. All right, listen, this first lesson was a little long. They usually won't be this long, but we had to get through some introductions and we had to get you some ideas about the structural class and so on. That's not going to happen any after today's lesson, so I would expect them to be a little bit shorter after this. Have yourself a great one. Bye-bye.